Welcome back. This is National Geographic Weekend. I'm Boyd Matson. I'm just looking through the uh, latest issue of National Geographic Traveler magazine, uh, the October issue, and the cover story is about Istanbul. But if you look at the first pictures of uh, this article, you think, well, this could be just any city in Europe. And maybe that is the point of the article, this city of the past, this city of historical significance, as it is titled in the column, is also the city of the future. Pico Iyer has written the article. He joins us now. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Delighted to be here. And looking at these pictures, and I say European because when you think of Istanbul, if you hear the name, you think uh, Islamic culture, and it is, what, 90-some percent, 98 percent Islamic? Yes, Turkey is 98 percent Islamic. Um, But, um, of course, Istanbul is largely European, and everyone always mentions it as the one place almost where the Islamic world meets the global order, and I think that's what's so interesting about it. And and how is that clash of civilizations going in this uh, this city? Because it wasn't that long ago they had an election and elected a, a president who represented a more conservative strand of Islam, but the country seems committed to uh, not being a religious rule country, but to be a democracy. Exactly. And I think for the visitor, it means it's wonderful because you really get the best of, best of both worlds. Uh, you get all the antiquity we associate with Istanbul, as you were saying, the, the mosques, the harems, the crowded bazaars, everything that's redolent of 500 years ago. And yet we also get this very cutting-edge, global, chic, neon culture we'd associate with Santa Monica or Tokyo. I think for the Turkish people, just as you say, it's, it's a division and it's a friction and they're not sure which side is going to end up preeminent. But I think for a visitor, it means that Istanbul is even more interesting. In fact, uh, as you talk about in the, the article, you see a lot of activity on the streets and in the shops, and uh, and, and they have everything for now, movie theaters showing the American movies, Western movies. Uh, uh, there is a lot of alcohol served in nightclubs, even in this Islamic country. And yet, none of the workers that you noticed, uh, particularly staffing these shops and businesses, were female. It's still very much a male-dominated uh, culture as far as the workforce. Yes, so it's almost as if the whole city is striding into the 21st century in this very global, secular, Western culture with one foot, and with the other, it's firmly rooted in the ancient ways that haven't changed much in a thousand years. And I think it's sort of doing the splits and going through an identity crisis, <laughs> but I think in some ways that's the identity crisis that the whole world uh, is going through. I noticed when I was staying in my hotel, Every morning at 5 a.m. I could hear the call to prayer from the minaret in the Blue Mosque, but I could also kind of hear hip-hop music down the street, and it's the way those two sounds go against one another or or go go together with one another that makes it such an interesting place. And I don't think that tension is quite so alive any other cities that I've been in. We're talking with Pico Iyer, who has written the cover story in National Geographic Traveler magazine's October issue about Istanbul, where East meets West, past meets the future. It's, this is going to be an interesting test uh, case on, on how old meets new and how they survive together, uh, because we keep hearing stories about uh, Islamic culture and the young people being uh, disenfranchised and perhaps a, a lack of jobs in the future and, and then turning more fundamentalist, except in this country, the young people seem to be leading the rush to the uh, nightclubs. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, I think I think the young people are leading the rush towards possibility and towards everything that they never had a chance to enjoy before, and that is mostly new stuff. So I think for a, a Turkish person, the lure of Istanbul is that it's this outpost of everything hip and chic. And for us, when we go there, it's mostly interesting as the sort of residue of something long vanished. For people who are bullish about the city, they say, well, this is the place where the global order will make its peace with Islam, and they'll find how wonderfully they can work together. But many other people say, well, that still remains in doubt. And it's almost as if the city is remaking itself every day. It doesn't know which it's going to be. And that's part of the excitement of it, too, is there's nothing fixed there. Well, Istanbul has survived a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, different cultures that have come in and, uh, and tried to rule from there. So this one more test for this ancient city. And if it survives as well as it has in the past, it, it could very well lead us into the future. The article is about Istanbul, East meets West, uh, Past Meets the Future. It's in the October issue of National Geographic uh, Traveler magazine. Pico Wire is the author. Thanks for joining us and uh, taking us on a little tour. Thank you so much.